Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to Five Nights of Family Dinners. Tonight we're going to have a chicken meatballs and spaghetti. This is a pretty easy recipe and you can do this with beef mince or with chicken mince. I've just used chicken mince because that's what I had in the freezer. And so I've just cut up two carrots here. I've chopped them up in the processor and one onion. And now I'm just going to add around about less than one cup of breadcrumbs. You can add more to this and some um, garlic salt and some sesame seeds by choice. I've just put, you know, a few tablespoons there because I like sesame seeds in um, chicken balls and things like that. So then I'm just going to mix this all together now. It's a little bit sticky, the chicken mince, so I didn't put an egg with it. And I'm going to cook it in the air fryer, so I've made them into little balls, and I'm just going to put some olive oil on top of that. And um, time-wise, probably depends on your air fryer. I've put this on for around about 25 to 30 minutes on around about 160 and then I turned it back up to around about 200 degrees to sort of get a little bit more um, browner. But I am going to cook it in the frying pan with sauce as well. As you can see, I've got some chicken tonight, ta chicken taco sauce. This was a bit different. It had corn in it. I haven't had this one before, but it was on special this week. So I'm just going to put that in the pan here while I'm cooking up um, some spaghetti and I'll do my normal thing and I put some water in the bottom and just get all the rest of the sauce out there and once that gets up to heat I will add the chicken balls to the sauce and then I will just leave that for around about 10 to 15 minutes so it just gets the flavoring through all the chicken. I'll then just heat up some greens with the dinner and I'll wait for the spaghetti to cook. Tonight we're going to have a salmon and vegetable tray. I love having salmon in the freezer. It's just my go-to when I just can't think of anything else to cook because it's something that just doesn't take that long once it's defrosted and you can put it with anything. So here I've just chopped up a few sweet potatoes. I've got some cauliflower, which I'm the only one in the house that eats, so I don't give myself too much there. Um, but I can always have it for, for tomorrow anyway. That's the best thing about having these trays. I wish I would have put two trays on this night because they just seem to shrink down so much. It, there's a lot of vegetables when you start and then there's hardly any when you get it out of the oven. So here I'm just going to chop up a little bit of broccoli out of these Kmart containers I got. I love these and they do work really well, especially when you wash vegetables or fruit before it. I'm going to add some capsicum to this because these were already chopped up in that container and I'm going to cut up some beetroot. This is really messy. And you do get stained hands and a stained breadboard, but it's beautiful when it's baked beetroot. It comes out really sweet. So I'm going to put this in the oven now, this tray. Everything cooks fairly quickly like this, except for the beetroot. The beetroot does take a little bit longer. So um, I'll put some olive oil over the top of that, and then I'm going to get started on the fish. Well, tonight was just a family favourite. We're just having roast chicken, mashed potatoes and vegetables. It's a little bit different how I did it this time. I usually bake pumpkin and I bake carrots and I bake the um, potatoes. But on this particular night, I didn't have any pumpkin and I was pretty rushed. So I just thought I'd put the rest of the vegetables in from the container like the capsicum and the broccoli and do another tray bake. That's why I wish on the night before I would have put two of those trays in the oven. 
to save myself time. So I've just chopped up around about four potatoes there to um, mash. And then while that's um, boiling, I'm going to put in some breadcrumbs, about a cup full of breadcrumbs to make stuffing. I've got some mixed herbs. So I'm probably adding around about two tablespoons of mixed herbs to the breadcrumbs. Then I will chop up an onion. I'm only going to use a half an onion because the kids find it a little bit too strong. And I'm going to use the other half in the baking tray with the chicken. And then I'll just boil the jug and I'll put hot water in there to bind it all together. And then I'll just go ahead now and I'll stuff the chicken and then I'll pop it all in the oven. On the following night, we had spinach and ricotta triangles. This is a lot like just the um, spinach quiche that I make. I usually just do it with the cream, but instead I use ricotta. It's a lot like those um, uh, triangles you buy from the bakery, and it really did taste a lot like that as well. I should have used the phyllo pastry instead of the puff pastry, but they still worked out okay in the end. So I've put one tablespoon of butter in the pan here to melt, and then I've also put one onion to sort of brown off. And I've also put frozen spinach in there, so I'm just going to leave that now to sort of cook and defrost. And I've put one beaten egg in this bowl, and I've also got a tub of ricotta, which is about 375 grams. And I'm just going to mix that in together, and that's the ingredients for the um, spinach and ricotta triangles. And so as you can see, I've just sort of mixed it all in together. And once I've sort of cooled down the spinach and the onion together, you don't want it too hot because you'll end up cooking the egg and the cheese. So once I've I've cooled that down a little bit, I'll just add all that in together. But this is what I'm doing here. I'm just going to add a nut, bit of nutmeg. You don't have to do that. That's just optional because I do that just to give it a little bit more of that um, nutmeggy taste and I've just added some salt and pepper. I've cut these this way to show you that there's two ways you can sort of do this in the triangles. You can make them a lot smaller or a lot bigger. I prefer to do them bigger but once I started with the triangles it was a little bit endless so I only did about three and the rest of it I just put into a pie for the night because I could see that I was going to be there all night making triangles but I tried it and they were really nice and yeah, I'll just show you how I put it all together now. On this particular night, I made sweet potato and leek soup with fresh bread. The bread did take a little bit longer than usual, as fresh bread does. But yeah, I'll just show you how I put it all together. I'll make the bread first and I'll come back and show you how I make the soup.
On this particular night, my son really wanted to help me make the bread, so that was really helpful. So that was the other set of hands you would have seen in there um, helping me uh, mix the bread. I've got one leak here. I'm going to give a really good clean out and just clean all the dirt out of it. And you really do have to clean these thoroughly. I'm going to chop this up. Um, you're supposed to chop it up finely, but I'm going to use a blender at the end. And this really helps for when you're wanting to just throw things in a soup and you think, oh, I'm just going to blend it up at the end. I don't have to cut it up too small, but I am going to chop it as much as I can. And once I do that, I'm just going to add the rest of the, I'm going to chop up the rest of the ingredients, which is just one onion. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be about two onions in this, but I don't want to make it too strong for the kids because there is already a leak in there. I've chopped up two carrots. You can add any vegetables in this. This is just what I had. And I'm going to chop up the onion as well. And then I'm just going to put them in a pan with a little bit of olive oil. And I'm going to fry that off until it's like a golden brown. So it is, is mostly cooked. But I will add two cloves of garlic here as well. And I'll finally chop that, that up. And once that's cooking, I will be just chopping up um, a sweet potato I made the mistake here of not adding more than one sweet potato to this because it was very watery at the end. If you don't have sweet potato, you could just use a normal potato, which is, is what I usually do with pumpkin soup. I'll add like pumpkin and potato together to thicken it because the potato is a really good thickener. And once I've chopped up the sweet potato, I'm going to add that to the other ingredients along with four cups of vegetable stock. You can add chicken stock if you want. But I'm using just the stock cubes, the vegetable stock cubes. So I've put two stock cubes in four cups of hot water and I'm going to add that to the, the pan and that's going to be the soup. I'll show you a little trick that I use to thicken up the soup at the end. But in the meantime, I'll put some music on in the background. So I'm at the point now where the soup needs to be thickened and I'm going to use dead potato. This is a really good option to thicken things up. I've used around about a quarter of a cup here and I'm going to just mix that in. The soup is still quite hot so the potato will cook in the soup. This, um, this works really well especially when you're in trouble at the end and you haven't got any mashed potato or anything to add to it. And I try to make a soup at least once a week so it gets those extra vegetables into the kids' diet and they seem to eat the soup more than just dishing it out on a plate. My youngest child took his bowl and started eating it and my other one was sick so he was just having chicken noodle soup. I hope you've enjoyed our five nights of family dinners. Thank you very much for watching and I hope it's given you a few ideas for dinner and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.